At six o'clock, I'll call Here's tonight's me. meeting for the Canandaigua Town Board to order. I will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Crystalline, can you confirm the meeting was actually what could you call the roll, please? Sure. <laughs> Council Member John Casey. Present. Council Member Terrence Benelli. Present. Council Member Adeline Rudolph. I'm here. Council Member David Sauter. Present. Supervisor Jared Simpson. Present. Can you also confirm the meeting was properly advertised? Yes, it was. Excellent. All right. Is there anyone who would like to be heard for our first privilege on the floor? All right, that is exciting. So we will move on from there. We do have some presentations. Um, I see, so we have our, let's do our auditors first. Do we have people from both? We have people from both, yes. huh? Just the auditors. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. <laughs> do you want me to share my screen? That would be great. Okay. So do we have, make sure that we have that turned on? Thank you, Chris. What I'm waiting for, let's see. We do, you've got to go in and change the setting. It's another part of your fabulous job that you didn't know about yet, so it's going to change. You're right there. Uh, so, did, yeah, did you just hit the other button so multiple can share? You should be able, yep. able to share right now. I should be good then. Yep. Okay. Can you see the presentation okay? Yes. Yes, we yes. can. Okay. Perfect. All right. So, this is the presentation for the 2023 audit for the town of Canandaigua. Um, I will start with. The deliverables, so we are providing to you an unmodified independent auditor's opinion on the financial statements. It's unmodified, which means it's a clean opinion. It's the highest standard you can achieve in an audit. Uh, we also have the communication with those charged with governance, uh, the management letter, communications and observations from our audit, and then two agreed upon procedures reports, one for the town justice and one for the town clerk for their cash activity. Taking a look at a summary of the fund balances for the year and comparing it to the past two years, um, you can see the change in the fund balance for the general fund. You had a decrease of $431,000 in your fund balance. I do want to say that um, prior to the transfer of money from the general fund to the capital projects fund to pay for some of those capital projects, you had over a million dollars in net income um, in that fund. So um, not a huge concern that you have a net loss here because you had planned for uh, the transfer of those funds to the capital projects fund to help pay for those projects. So it wasn't that um, you had um, issues receiving less money or you had much more expenditures than you had budgeted. It really was just that transfer that you had planned on that caused that decrease in fund balance. Highway fund, there was a little bit of an increase there, um, mostly due to um, there was a little bit more sales tax that was allocated to the highway fund. Uh, this year compared to the last year. Uh, the water fund, you can see, went up slightly. Uh, capital projects, those fund balance amounts are really just a function of where you are on your projects. Um, they can be in a deficit fund balance if you're waiting for funding, or they can be in a um, positive fund balance if you've got funding and you're just um, you know, going through some of the expenditures. At the end of all your capital projects, they will net to zero with the amount of revenue that you received equaling the amount of expenditures for those projects. And then a little bit of a decrease in the fire protection fund. And I should also say too, that if you have any questions at any point, please just stop me. Yes, you the fire protection fund. Can you move the work bo that box over at all soon? Is that possible? Um, where is this? Sue's doing it. We're doing it. Oh. You're good. We're doing it. You're fine. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> 
Um, did you so did somebody have a question about the fire protection fund? No. It was okay. just it was hidden by the ah, uh the, the box. The box yeah. Got it. Uh, just taking a look at your fund basis revenue for the year and comparing it um, on the graph to the past two years, um, your revenue went up about 9%. Uh, most of that was due to um, an increase in your property taxes, which was part of your budget, and then also um, increased earnings on your investments for your cash accounts. Um, yeah, you know, we're seeing that at all of our municipalities in 2023. Um, they definitely had an increase in their interest earnings during the year due to higher interest rates. Um, your non-property taxes did go up a little bit, your sales tax, but it does seem to be leveling off. And I am seeing that at other municipalities as well. Um, not seeing as high of the increases that we had been seeing in 2022 in 2021 post-COVID. Um, I'm not saying that COVID is the reason for that, but just it does seem to be leveling off a little bit, um, those sales tax revenues. Taking a look at your expenditures, um, you have your salaries and benefits, which make up about 29% of your total expenditures. Salaries did go up about $350,000 or about 13%. Some of that was just raises based on your collective bargaining agreements and your agreements with employees. But another part of that too was you did add some employees to some of your departments. Um, so there was just an increase in, in, in employees as well. Um, but overall your employee benefits and salaries were pretty consistent making up 29% of the total expenditures. Uh, capital outlay did increase. Again, we expect to see that as your capital projects are um, going and, um, you know, they're wrapping up or they're, they're really starting to take off. So um, those capital outlay amounts will fluctuate year to year based on your capital project um, progress. And contractual, which is basically everything else other than your debt service, was very consistent year to year. Overall, your expenditures went up about 21%. Again, that's mostly due to capital outlay. If we took those capital outlay numbers out, your um, expenditures only went up about 3%. This is the summary of the government-wide. This is um, part of the financial statements which shows your debt, it shows your capital assets um, versus having, um, it's, it's on a full accrual basis versus a modified accrual basis. Um, so I won't go into too much detail here other than to say that for your assets, um, cash and your cash accounts uh, ended the year at a, over $14 million and your capital assets net of accumulated depreciation were over $31 million. So those two numbers really do make up most of your assets. And then your liabilities, you had bonds outstanding of about 6.7 million. Uh, they did decrease due to the principal payments that were made during the year. You still have some American Rescue Plan Act funds that are sitting on the balance sheet under liabilities that you're, you're planning on spending. Um, in 2024, or perhaps have already spent it. Um, so that was about a million dollars. So as you continue to make those payments on your bonds, and as you use that ARPA money, those liabilities will go down. The communication with those charged with governance is one of the required reports that we have to present. It basically outlines our responsibility, your responsibility, the planning of the audit, uh, that we are independent, especially regarding independence, uh, I mean, and ethical requirements, um, any, if there were any significant accounting policies or changes in estimates, we would let you know there were none this year. If we had any uncorrected uh, uh, entries or any corrected entries that are material, they're also on this letter and just some um, representations for management. So you will find that in um, your packet of information the management letter is just some observations that we have from the audit, just to try to be helpful in, um, in, in letting you, the board, know um, some things that may have come across um, that um, we want to let you know about. Um, so financial accounting and external reporting, we are required to let you know that we do pre prepare the financial statements based on information that we receive from you. 
Um, and we do um, put all of that together and we're required to let you know that. And then we have another comment regarding capital assets. It's um, very similar to one we had last year where um, just going through your capital asset report and making sure the cost amounts are uh, correct, everything's been added in that should be added in for the year. Um, and um, we will provide you with any changes that we found that we made so that you have an updated uh, list that you could start with. Um, but just taking a look at those amounts, making sure your depreciation is calculated correctly uh, before you provide it for the audit. Um, and then there are some uh, government accounting standards that are coming up over the next few years. Um, I think uh, for the accounting changes and error corrections, um, that is really only effective if that situation happens, like there's a new accounting pronouncement that we need to implement. Um, so that's really more on us than it is on you um, to take a look at that. Um, for compensated absences, that's the value of your employees accumulated sick and vacation and uh, personal time. Uh, you, you have a fairly small balance there. So I, I'm not anticipating that really having much of an effect on your financial statements. Um, and then there's some changes to some of the footnote disclosures that we'll need to take a look at for 2025. And then um, some changes to the management's discussion and analysis for 2026. Um, but we'll be looking into those and getting back to you with all that information as it gets closer to those imp implementation dates. Is there any questions? Can we get down here? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, do we have it already? Yeah. Just came today. So. Yeah. So the copies that you just sent today, mm -hmm. so there's some that you just sent today, they will be distributed to the board uh, mm -hmm. for further review and action. Yeah, we just got those. <clears throat> they were just put in the folders today. Uh, yes, so I do apologize for the delay on that. We were trying to get everything done last week, and um, you know, normally we we would provide that a little bit more timely. But yeah. um, it's going through the final review here on our end. Mm -hmm. So once we have that final review, we can issue them final. I will say one of the other things too, is we are waiting for, um, we had sent a legal rep letter request to um, your attorney and we are waiting for a response from him. We did, we have followed up. So hopefully we'll be getting that soon. And then we'll just need a management representation letter from you, which I'll provide once I get that attorney letter. I got the follow-up this afternoon, and I will have it to you by tomorrow. That'd be great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you for the reminder. No problem. So can we expect significant changes between kind of the outlay here and then the final? Nope. Okay. Mm -mm. All right. Do any board, anybody have any questions about the, the overview? And it was intended for an overview of, uh, of what they did, and we'll get the more of the meat later on. Any other, any board member questions? I'd just like to compliment Jess and you and Crystalyn for their hard work on our changing finances this year. So <laughs> did a great job. And Mary and Brooks, patience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's no problem at all. I appreciate you listening, you know, be so being so responsive to all of our questions. <laughs> Yes, and thank you for being easy to work with on that. And, uh, you know, in working with us through transition transition and change, we appreciate it. Of course. Uh, Jess, do you have any questions or comments on the audit? I don't. You sure? You don't you want to take the podium for a few no, minutes? No, no, good. Prepared <laughs> statement? Nothing? No. That's All right. Chance, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know. All right. Well, Mary, thank you very much. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for the report and uh, and the service you provide. Thanks. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Right, take care. Have a good night. You. Bye. This was your chance. This was your chance to have really? take the podium and just. I bet if it was raining, she would have talked. Once she the final have. comes and I get a list of their recommendations right. for you know any changes, then I'll you know, speak your piece. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then we'll go. Yeah. Then we'll go and we'll build off of that. Thank you for that. Uh, so we also have uh, a presentation of, on GoGov and the website. So um, that's me. That's you. Presentation. Sue is presenting. I am just updating yes. everybody on the um, 
upgrade to the website. Uh, there is, uh, they've been working on the back end of that right now. So it's all the techno stuff that I can't even begin to explain. But by next week, the website should start to have a fresh new look. Uh, we modeled it after the town of Pittsburgh uh, and what some of the things that they do just to make it easier for the public. A lot of information is on ours, but some of it is repetitive. Uh, so just trying to bring it into compliance and just make it a more user friendly for our residents. So um, in partnership with that is the GoGov app, which is actually live now. You can actually download it. I have it on my phone and it's called My TOC. You would go, you have a, your app for whichever kind of phone you have and you can look that up. You'll see the town of Canada was little logo and it's a free download. Um, so in the app store look for my my, my, my yeah. yeah, and you can usually you'll see the logo and you'll know it's the town of Canada. Um, when you bring it up, of course, I took a picture on my phone and I have a mega big because I'm blind, so it'll actually look you know it's normal, it's not so big, and, but it doesn't got to can't see anything. That's what the um you know these are some of the things that are going to be on here, put places for people to just get kind of the information and. Um, the fast stuff because people use their phones for fast information. So that's what's going to be on there. But the nice part is the notifications which come out as alerts. Um, I did one, uh, there's a bunch on there if you go download and want to look, but there's one for tomorrow, which oh, the app isn't live yet. We haven't really publicized it yet, but I just wanted to show you like tomorrow we have a water shut off. So if we have one once, you know, August 1st is our date to really start marketing and pushing this, you know, this would pop up for those people that signed up for notifications so they know the water's going to be shut off or how long, what streets it affects, um, that kind of thing. So that's just a little update of where we're at. There's still a lot of things to be, to be done on it, but we're working on it and really with the hope of uh, getting communication out to the residents that's quick and easy. Um, and I can say that in the CAP meeting that we had last week, which was an organizational meeting, um, one of the things they wanted, well, their goals is to get communication out to the public, and they will really help with all of our social media accounts and push, you know, and, and really figuring out how do the people of the town of Canada will want to get their information. Um, because not all people do apps, and not all people do Facebook, so, um, but they will partner with us to get some of these new and enhanced uh, uh, apps and information out. Any questions? Sue, are you the primary contact for that? At this point, yes, uh, but there's going to be some trainings coming on, and so, like, Jim obviously should be involved for, you know, road notifications, Crystal, and so um, at this point, it was just setting up. I do the sheriff's app, so it was kind of just making sense because it's very similar, mm -hmm. um, but we're going to get training out to people that will be involved and and is are we intending to use any of the GoGo's like budgeting stuff or any of that? We haven't. We've thought about it. The county uses it, and I haven't. Not a whole lot has been pushed out this this go round. Uh, it's more for just baby steps, kind of thing. baby. Yeah, baby steps with that. I think down the road, especially for capital projects and tracking where those are, that would be beneficial. But yeah, it's working these things. It's working these things in piece by piece to become more transparent and have everything out there because eventually you'll be able to see and look up, you know, if we went that route, you'd be able to see on the budget and be able to pull it up on your phone and see, okay, here's the, here's the county, here's this project. This is how much has been spent so far. So it, it's an overview and it doesn't go into all the minuscule, the, the minutia of it. It's just a big picture snapshot. So people are just aware. Well, based on the training that I had with them last year sometime when I sent that out to everybody, I would love to see that at some point that we move into that mm -hmm. because it really made the finances much more accessible to people than mm -hmm. trying to figure out our budgeting software or just attending the budget meetings. It was more clear, yeah. particularly like you said with the capital projects, like where they were, where that was going. And, and I think it would probably be nice for the staff too to have, it's, it's kind of like a more visual, mm -hmm. bigger picture of, of what's going on and, I think it could be something that could really be used both ways. Versus 300 pages of spreadsheets. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> a little more cumbersome. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> I can add just one thing. Yep. That there will be an on the GoGov app um, eventually something for just town employees and the board members to, you know, mm -hmm. private messaging kind of thing that the general public. So we'll have our own little. Not for board members. Chris's look was yeah, like, we eh. can't, you know. 
<laughs> yeah, I saw your. I mean, whatever. I mean, however we structure it, but it's for employees. Let's say so that can utilize that for announcements with the in-house that kind of stuff. Yeah, so. I think we would just have to make sure that it's foilable. Well, well then, yeah. yeah, that it's archived yeah. appropriately, and I don't need Princeton, and you can you probably have they, they do it with yeah. other towns, so yeah. however, they're yeah, you know. <laughs> it turned out great. This is really nice. Really, yeah, it's really I was really just checking nice. it out. It's really and the benefit, for example, for the communication with that, uh, for example, HR uh, for open enrollment, instead of oh yeah, putting something in a, a piece of paper in everybody's paycheck, could put out and say, hey, open enrollment, boom, it shows up on your phone. Uh, then you could make an, a, a calendar reminder right from that. Uh, again, the, the storm debris that we had where people were asking, when are you going to pick that up? You know, we just extended it through this week. That would be something that, boom, that shows up on your app. Uh, it's there. It's like, oh, I can keep going through Wednesday. But um, but just cleans that up and makes it more efficient. Any other questions for Sue on this? I did one thing. Can we get the new sign instead of the old old sign on our website and YouTube? We can do whatever we want. I yeah. Yeah. Um, which new sign? Whatever. That's the old sign we used to have out front. Yeah, that's that got a view of the lake. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Take a peek okay. when you leave, because yeah. it'll still be daily. Like, a nice clean logo or whatever I that bet is. the <laughs> Oksana and the yeah. team would have that. We can change it. I think so. Yeah. I just use Sarah. Yeah. Sarah have it. Would, it would be nice to get some really nice. I, I do have, it's not shown here, but there's a nice picture of the park. Yeah. On another page. page. Yeah. Oh, we could keep messing So with if somebody it. sends it to me, I would. Does it have to have the exclamation point when you search or no? No. <laughs> Sorry. Well, no, it's fine. I, I just I, see the logo. I had searched it before and couldn't find it, and then I searched it with the exclamation point and it showed up. So I'm like, oh, maybe I just need the exclamation yeah. point. So. Yeah, I just like it. Sorry. For oh, those good. of you who don't have it on your phones, it looks a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. It does. Just, okay. I'm blind, but it, it really it actually looks pretty. Looks like this. Neat and yeah. 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 Okay, great. All right, well, thank you, that Sue. Really nice yeah, study. great job. Thank you for working on that and, uh, and meeting with them and getting everything up and running. Uh, so as advertised, we will be, we do have a meeting of a Canandaigua Uptown bid uh, embedded in our town board meeting. Uh, and we will be opening and closing this meeting as part of the town board meeting. Uh, so at this time, I'll entertain a motion to open the bid meeting. Second. Moved by Terry, seconded by Adeline. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. So we now we're going to enter into the bid meeting. Uh, I just a quick review of bid finances. We did not have any expenses this year, and I apologize I couldn't print this. I have not been able to log into Encode for about a week and print anything since we transferred over and haven't been able to get with Tyler because of the holiday to tell me what I'm doing wrong. Uh, we took in $105,000 in taxes uh, last year. Uh, currently, our budget is uh, is estimated to be our, our balance, $105,400 because of interest earnings. So that means we did not spend any money in the bid. Um, we did budget in that $105,000. We had $75,000 for the ban, uh, and that ban was for streetlights, and we decided not to use it for the streetlights. So the money is still there. And we uh, have $30,000 in contractual utilities uh, for that, uh, which we did not spend uh, either. So the budget still sits there for the bid, um, and that will be able to accrue and we'll be able to use it for other improvements within the district, uh, within the residents and the members of the of the uptown bid. So that is the uh, brief financial update, not a whole lot of action going on. Uh, we do have one resolution for the uptown bid, and that was in discussion with attorney Nadler. Uh, one of the things that we have talked about quite a bit was, uh, you know, we have this bid and it's really kind of uh, in name only. Uh, we have it, but we don't have businesses and other groups involved at this point. Uh, when we created the bid, the town board uh, is technically the management association for the uptown bid. Uh, but in order to help it grow and progress and really meet the needs, because we don't, we've talked about repeatedly, we don't meet the needs of what the businesses want or how they want to that area to grow and expand. Uh, so in talking with Chris, uh, we talked about this resolution 
uh, authorizing the creation of a district management association for the uptown bid. Uh, that association, all based on the laws that we have, and part of those are referenced in the resolution. Uh, they're in the back of the packet, uh, and they're also in the binder uh, that we had when the bid was created. It would follow all those, but it would allow us to empower business owners to start making decisions for the bid and start moving it in the direction that they would like to see it, which is the whole purpose of this, with one caveat that the board still maintains all taxing, all financial authority over that entity um, to take that action. So uh, that's the resolution that we have before us. So that's 980M, I was reading it today, that outlines the how that management association would be staffed. And you get supervisor gets to pick one, yeah. chief fiscal officer gets to pick one, the board picks somebody. Mm -hmm. I mean, it gives an outline. It's very short and sweet. And yeah. That one. We've talked about that before, but we just never. We haven't done it. And I think. And that's been one of the one of the difficult things about the bid because we created it and we created it quickly with a sole purpose with the purpose of as it was presented to us to be able to raise revenue to replace the street lights on 332 and take some of these actions. Well, the bid's been slow to develop. I mean, the one business that we might have, the one new business that we might have is is a couple of years in the making still. Uh, so it has been slow to develop, but bringing in some of these eight outside agencies would allow us We're that opportunity. The for lease. <laughs> yeah, that's a funny name for a business, yeah, but no. I'll take it. So, Chris, do you have any comments? I have a question, and I just, I'm sorry, I forgot that the bid didn't pay for the lights. Who did? You guys just decided to. We use fund bet. We use the unallocated fund balance. Okay. Yeah. Because and yeah, the unassigned fund balance because yes. they benefit anybody who drives oh, down the road. Right. Yeah, no, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I just forgot. So the bid hasn't done anything. Yes, they, they actually... have. They purchased equipment. The bid is purchased. Okay. The bid purchased a bobcat. Okay. To keep the streets clean within the bid to plow. Okay, got it. Uh, and do any other sort of maintenance there? That is really the bit. That's been the big big expenditure of the. Of the district, okay. really the bobcat. That was early, early so, this year. Toolcat. Yeah. Toolcat. And one of the things that yes. we, when we did the walk along last yes. year with which committee was that with again? I don't know. Yes. I forget. Was it yes. is, I think CIC. CIC. So when we did the walk along last year, one of the things that came up from that was the need for plantings um, between the sidewalk and the road um, because it does not create any. <laughs> Many of the trees are dead yeah. or, or, you know, not there. And It'd be nice to get something, but I guess New York State is the is the problem mm -hmm. is the, the stop within the right of way. Yeah, which creates a problem, right? right. So, but even bushes are something that was one of the things that they talked about with that. But um, I would recommend if we're wanting to staff this that we also look at. I mentioned this to you earlier today um, when the Economic Development Committee was meeting. Uh, to create the form-based code areas. We invited, we went door to door to every business in the 332 form-based code sub area and uh, invited them all to come to a meeting to help work on the creation of the form-based code area. And we got a huge turnout for an event that we held must have been in 2019 out at the, um, the school operations center, we got probably 40 or 50 different businesses. So I'd like to look back at our, um, at the minutes from the economic okay. development committee meeting, see who was there for that and start, you know, as we start to talk about who to put on this, um, obviously we all know some likely persons, but that might be another place to, to look as well because those individuals express an interest already in what's happening in that area. Perfect. You said that was 2019. I think it was 2019. Yeah. It was before yeah. COVID and before we adopted the form based yeah. code area. Yeah. So. yeah. A lot of the people were there really just to learn. To learn, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If there have been over those intervening years, business owners in the area, have, <clears throat> have they come in and question where we are? No. We've had to go out. We have had to go out and meet with them. We've had a few meetings, but it's making the 
I know, you know, Dave and I met with a couple and it's going out and making the appointment and talking to them about their thoughts and ideas for the bid. Uh, it hasn't gotten a ton of traction. So nobody's coming in asking about the process. Nobody has come in and asked about the, the you know, the, what's happening with the taxes that are being levied, uh, what our plans are. So hopefully this gets that network, uh, continues to work on that network and getting involved. We may need to have another session like that with the business owners because that meeting attracted more than just business owners. Yeah, it did. Mm -hmm. group. But to see, engage who is really interested in, you know, being on this. Yeah. Uh, so they're paying some money out. So you think there's potentially much more activity that's going to be happening. Yes. Yeah. There. There's, there's so much more. Hopefully. In the next, yeah. Yeah. Next years. Oh. And this just create, this just, and this just allows Chris to go forward. We're going to we'll create a work on it, and then it bring it's not no actions. To, the only action taken from this is the creation of the structure. Then it would come back, yes, for board approval. So this is just step one, really. Well, I'll create. It's incurring some expense. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's filing fees, reporting fees at the New York State level to create a nonprofit corporation registered with the New York State Secretary of State. Um, it's, I mean, it's not a company, don't, don't get me wrong. Um, and then we have to set up some bylaws that say, um, and I want to be clear, the District Management Association, best I can tell, runs the Business Improvement District. The town board has certain legislative functions that are assigned by section 980-C. There's uh, 11 things that you can construct, construction and installing of landscaping, planting and park areas, lighting and heating facilities, uh, ramp, sidewalks, widening, narrowing or widening existing streets. And then there's five maintenance and additional services required for the enjoyment. You can provide enhanced sanitation services, uh, promote advertising activities within the district, marketing, education, decorations, and lighting, uh, services to enhance security um, and enhance accessibility improvements adjacent to public areas. So that's so. I don't know if the town board being the board of directors is the best way to phrase it. That is what your district management. Your district plan says the town board will be the board of directors. Um, but I think going forward, once you have this set up and established, your district management association will do the things or coordinate with the town to do the things that really operate the business improvement district. Um, so it involves spending tax money. I was under the impression the town board is the ultimate say on where the money is spent. Uh, yes. Not I, this association. I think that's an accurate. Just give direction yes. and correct. Gives, you know, direction. Um, um, that into the town board, you know, we want to do this, this, and this. The cost it. Yes. In consideration of budgeting for the following year, mm -hmm. all those kind of things. So, yes. yes. That's accurate. That yeah. was what we uh, all did. The town board never goes away. We don't give yeah. that the correct. Right. Well, well it's like the city with. City Council and the dead. They funded it. I mean, they, they funded it. They said, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, all I've got to go on uh, is the statutory language that you, know, you read it this afternoon. And it's, you know, it says what it says, but it doesn't give <clears throat> the answer to your question. The best I can tell is that it's a little bit of both. The town board has the legislative powers which involves funding things. Um, you know, in a business improvement district in New York City, I think you know, the District Management Association probably gets an, a budget from the city uh, board of supervisors, and then you know, they'll hire an executive director and maintenance staff. Obviously, at our scale, we're not going to separate those functions. Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, the District Management Association, well, there are three appointed board members from this, from the town. The rest are elected by the residents or, and tenants or owners and tenants 
in the business improvement district. I think the intent beyond, if it's not construction or maintenance, or the you know the things that I just read off that are the town boards, legislative powers, and the district management association handles those. Which type of flowers to plant? Yeah, and that kind of stuff. I think I think that's what it is. You know, I don't have a master's in public administration. I can't. Well, we need to dig in. I can't dig in. Imagine the work. stuff. I can't come up with a good example of thinking about it. Um, oh. I don't think. So let's say they wanted to build a sidewalk. How does that work? Well, that's a good question. In the business improvement district, well, they're not going to have any money to build a sidewalk or not equipment right. to build a sidewalk or highway workers mm -hmm. or the ability to contract with the company to do that. So they, I think what I think the practical way it happens is it frees the town board and town staff up from thinking about where the sidewalk goes. They come to you and say, hey, we'd like to build a sidewalk here. And you either say yes or no. Uh, you know, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I think that's the practical answer to that. Mind if I, John, do you have some? Yeah, uh, address this and approach this from a different perspective. Please. What happens if we never spend the money? That's a good question. Let me follow that up. If we don't have an answer to that, let me keep going. I'm against this whole principle. I want it to be loud and clear, okay? I don't think it's right for us as the government body to set up an entity to tell the business owners in this particular district how to spend their money, all right? And one of the, one of the things that we can spend it on is promoting and marketing, right? Mm -hmm. And you're gonna tell me that we know better than the, the actual business owner how to spend their money. I mean, this to me sounds like something crazy that Governor Hochul would come up with in Albany. It doesn't make any sense to me why we're going to go and tax people on the if come. And if that's what we're going to do and say that the sidewalks is an example in the business district ought to be paid by the business district, then I would throw on the table and challenge why aren't the residents along Middle Cheshire Road paying a special tax to pay for the sidewalks that we've been talking about for the last four or five years. And the premise from which all of this is established is very old information and ideas and concepts. I mean, we use the comprehensive plan as the backup document. The comprehensive plan was originally established in 2003. It was updated again in 2011. That's 13 years ago. No, How, it's been no, updated. It's been, it was updated. It was, it was 2020. It was before COVID. No, it was, it was during before COVID. COVID and during COVID. The world's changed. To me, it's antiquated. Comprehensive plan doesn't work. We sat in the LDC meeting two weeks ago, and every single board member was there. And basically, what we heard was that our comprehensive plan might be creating an obstruction for business development in this local business development area. So I would even put on the table, why are we even dealing with this so, until we have the developers coming in and talking to us at our next LDC meeting and see if the comprehensive plan is not a detriment to development in this area that we're taxing? Was it comprehensive plan or form-based code? I think you're talking about form-based code. Yeah. They were talking about form-based code. It's all the same. But this document different. refers to the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan was developed during COVID. The world's changed. And I would argue that this is antiquated. I mean, just the fact that we want to go and tax an entity like the business district on an if come because we might go and have some improvements that we want to do, I think is is just it's not Canandaigua. That's something I'd hear out, out of Albany. I'll keep it general. And I just don't support it. I think it's wrong. And uh so would you propose what would what would your would you propose dissolving, dissolving the bid? I would. Okay. Because, so, so Chris, could I? I mean, that you? opens up. Here, hold on, because that that is an option. 
it's an option to dissolve. It's an option to, then again, what do you do with it? It's got to be returned. We, we, it was money was taxed from the residents, but you're right. In order for dissolution, you'd have to figure out, okay, what do we do with that money back? I mean, I remember when we, you know, two things that I, you know, the, the, the form-based code and, and the uptown bid are things that I wasn't a hundred percent in love with when they came through and when I learned about them, I'll be fully honest with that. So I can respect what you're saying and what direction you're taking on this. And the question of, do we have, a, did we have a need or did we create something and then create a need by creating something? I, that, I think you hit the nail on the head. So yeah, we have the pub cycles, 30, right? 30 seconds more. Yeah. The only thing we have spent money on so far is a snowplow. Correct. For sidewalks. Correct. And you assigned it, we assigned it to the bid. Correct. I would say when snowplowers are going down Westlake Road, should we go and apportion a piece of money just to pay for the sidewalks from the residential lakefront district? Yeah, you guys can buy. Yeah, I want you guys can buy a snow plow for it now. Well, you know what? So no, I got it. So that's I get just it. my point. I mean, I how do we say that this I get particular it. piece of equipment just can was it, for that particular Let me area. answer John's question because I think it. Let me answer that question because I think it sheds light on the on the situation. The reason municipalities are allowed to set up business improvement districts is to focus funds. To, to enhance the business environment in a certain area. We want business here. This is where businesses are going to succeed. Uh, you know, you create a main street. Um, you create a, you know, you put flowers up, you put lighting up, rents get raised, you know, it, it, but it's not a town benefit like, you know, most Flying sidewalks, most sidewalks. Street sewers, right. street lights can yeah. be considered. This is to enhance the business environment. Which is what, when our former town manager brought it to us as an idea, that was exactly the argument that we, we were given. So, that, so yeah. Chris, can I ask a question? So when we talk about spending the money, we're the keepers of the money. So this uptown board would say, hey, we want to put in white racks. And they say, it's going to cost $100,000. We would say yes or no to the 100000 they're bringing cost suggestions. We're not pushing things at them, correct? Exactly. I think, no, I think it could be either. Or they'd have a budget. Right. They would have a budget of $250,000. And with that budget, that they'd be able to make whatever improvements they would want but to within the, was within the bid during so the let year. Me, let, me, let, me, let me go on. I mean, we haven't even been able to go out and talk to the businesses to say that they want to contribute to beautification of the area. And if we did want to go and beautify the area, why wouldn't we just go to businesses and say, this is what we're thinking about and deal with it on an individual by individual basis. And go to them with a with a plan and say, look, we're thinking about improving the, the walkway and beautifying this area to make it nice so that people come in and spend money at your business. <clears throat> we haven't even talked to them about it yet. But instead, what we are doing is we're setting up an organization to go and tax them on the if come. You've already set up. I understand you've already done set up, job. but I, I'm sitting here saying to myself, I don't know so much that this is right. You know, it might be okay for New York City where you need to improve something. It might be okay for downtown Canandaigua. You know, well, I just, I don't think we ought to be collecting money to go in spend it for the benefit of the businesses we haven't even talked to yet. Well, at that same meeting I was referring to earlier where all the businesses were there, they also, that's where they're also asking for a business improvement district so that they could have some say in what's happening in their area and bring more customers in and make it look more like a actual area of town that is welcoming in the entrance to our community. Well, and, um, and but they, uh, the businesses at the time, um, obviously, that was happening right when COVID was hitting and we were creating and developing the plan. So the timing was definitely off to have that continue through and have that 
exposure happened. Also, that was the Economic Development Committee, which essentially is defunct at this point. So there's been nobody continuing with the retention and, and work with those businesses since that time. So. Go ahead, then. I've got a thought. I believe you. Now. Okay. But show it's, me the numbers. It's in the minutes for show the Economic the Development Committee meetings. I mean, you're saying that was five years ago. I say five years ago, the world was different than it is it today. Was? And if the businesses in that area say yes, we want the town of Canandaigua to tax us and then go and decide how we're going to go and beautify the area for them. I'm all for it. No, they wanted to have but a I say in it. Black and that's white. why the we were businesses talking. Businesses in that area want this in our instance. And that's why we were talking about creating a so I've got, committee to help with that. So how about this? Taking all this into account because you have you have pulled me on some of these things. What if we do this? And one of the reasons why we hit, why I've talked to Chris about this is because by law, since we created the bid and we are taxing, we need to have meetings like this. And I'm glad we're doing it tonight. We need to have meetings like this to account for what we've spent and account or not spent and account for what we're doing. So that's why I'm glad we're doing this and having this, this discussion. What if we did, what if we, and I'm just kind of thinking out loud here, Chris comes back with a plan. Chris and I meet together and we create a plan. Okay. A plan for what? A plan for this. To for create, to bring in businesses, to create the entity. We make an agreement that the tax rate for the bid this year will be zero. Because we don't have any, we haven't spent any money last year from what we took in taxes. We agree that, okay, tax rate will be zero until this group is formulated and decides what they would want to do and what some of their goals are. If they say we don't want it, then we dissolve it and then we figure out how to, to go back and, and disperse whatever we have in that. But if they yeah. say, we here's what we would like to do and they have enough votes and they say, here is well, here are some things we'd wanna do, here's what we are thinking of financially, then we can create tax rate to help with that. Does that make sense? What are your thoughts on that? I think what I heard you say was, let's canvas the businesses to see whether they want it. That I support completely. Well, that's we need, what to, this... we need to go out and hear from the business community that they want something mm -hmm. like this. And that's what I this resolution it's, is. It's trying to get a steering committee that is actually, that's what we've been all been saying from the beginning. We need to get people from the actual businesses themselves to help in, be involved and lead this process because we need them to be the leaders and the instigators of this happening, not, not just us. You're saying what I'm saying. Yeah. I know. It's presumptuous for, for us to think we know how to go and spend their money better than they do. Yeah, that's the whole The reason. only thing this did was it allowed us to well, tax it and yeah. then give it to them to... to we are not saying that we know how better to spend money. No. What we're saying is through this and through this whole discussion of bid, is you establish this group and then that group just exactly. decides how yeah. where to spend the money. If there are any, you establish a budget with them or they establish a budget, come to us and say, is this acceptable? We say yes or no. We'll fund this, this, and this. Yep. Tax rate will be whatever it is. That said, before we go ahead, even with this, I think maybe this should be tabled for now. Mm -hmm. Get these people together and see if they endorse the way they are. Yes, which can, is what you guys But can saying. we get them together without creating the association? Because well, we talked about trying together. to do yeah. that. We didn't have it when we had that meeting up at yeah. the, you know, but at do least that first. Yeah. One of the, I got some ideas. I don't mean to interrupt, but I just said brainstorm, I just said. One of the folks of our town manager when he could come in is to go out and meet the businesses mm -hmm. and canvas the businesses and find out how they feel about this, mm -hmm. right? And come back to us and say, I talked to X, Y, and Z. You know, I talked to 40 of the 100 businesses there. And so far, my canvas says everybody's in favor of it. Or he's going to come back and say, or she could come back and say, I canvassed 40 or 50 of them and 90% of them don't want anything to do with this. I mean... We're supposed to be acting and governing for the people. Mm -hmm. And I think until we hear from the people, for us to go and set something like this up is presumptuous. So it's and how right. But I mean I'll try to shut up. <laughs> just just to 
I no, think it's I'm not agreeing with things you're saying. I mean, don't shut up. It's not that I don't agree with that. I just want. <laughs> it's it not that I don't agree here. with you. I just want to make it clear that we did have public hearings when we did went through yeah. this whole process, and we did canvas people when we set this up to begin with. So there has been careful work from people <clears> and inf input from people that they did want this when it was created. So it's not something that we just came up with off of the top of our manager town manager's head. So. This is a book. I don't know how many of you have. Yeah, books. books upstairs. A book is an understatement. It is. Yeah, it's everything. It's yeah. very heavy book. It's got everything in it, the whole history. Mm -hmm. Some of which is contained in this. Uh, and really, really, there's summary. about this much of it has to deal with the uptown bid, though. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. But I mean, it, it was an effort to try, from an economic standpoint, to mm -hmm. establish a platform. A forum where businesses could get together and make decisions on how they want to see that area grow. And that's what the whole idea behind the bid, yeah. behind this association. Which is the well, missing piece. I mean, that's the missing right. piece. So we I, don't have, we've been asked to put input, we don't have more comment. No, I want to go down more, please. In my own humble opinion, we ought to be pushing the county for this, anyways. Mm -hmm. If we want to improve that stretch of 332, which is one of the most yeah. driving economic forces in this county, the county should be stepping up to the plate and helping us out with that. But if the money is too easy to come from the businesses, then we're going to go to the easy way, right? I mean, that's just human nature. But the right way is to get the county involved. Yeah. Now I will be quiet. Just why, why, for a while. So why, why, why the county? The State why is the county? Yeah, it's a state road. Why the county? No. Because well, because the county benefits from that road as much as we do yeah. with business sales and revenue yeah. sales. I mean, I would say the county has tried with Acoustus. The county has been working hard with Acoustus and trying to keep them viable and keep and keep them here in that regard. Um, I have not heard any of yeah. that, but the county doesn't have the that. the county doesn't have the staffing to work with small businesses right now. And that's what we heard in that last year. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So the that's, organization yeah. and the structure isn't there in our county as it was in uh, Livingston County. Yeah. 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 So let's go to let's this conversation go. runs along that conversation. Let's Same similarly, right? Let's let's go to sorry, Chris, our attorney for some in, for some guidance on this. So the reason legal I legal guidance I've taught the reason. I've been talking to Jared about this, and Jared said, "Let's put it, you know, put this on the is to have for you to have this conversation." Mm -hmm. um, I didn't even remember that the bid had paid for the lighting, um, but I, you know, it really hasn't done much. And you know, this is what you, as the board of the Down Again, the big one, need to be talking about. I'm glad you're doing it. Um, I want to uh, make it clear, and I, I sort of cut myself off before. The code said the statute says, in addition to such other powers as are conferred on it by law, the district management association may make recommendations to the legislative body with respect to any matter involving or relating to the district. But the important part is the beginning where it says other powers as are conferred by law. You can address, John, your concerns by setting up this district management association by saying, you know, the district management association is going to do all this. The town board still has to approve it and sign the contract. Um, but the, the whole point of a business management or business improvement district, I think, is to do what you're saying. Give, but have the town orchestrate getting them the funding from themselves. You know, if you've got a chamber of Comet, commerce or a merchants association, look at one of their, you know, when they have their pasta dinner fundraiser, look at who's advertising. It's the same eight businesses every time. Mm -hmm. Not everybody ponies up. This makes everybody in the business district who's going to benefit pay okay. their share. Mm -hmm. but, like any special district. Right. Especially, actually, and I, it dawned on me even further at, through this conversation, that's what this is set up to do. It's let them make the decisions subject to town board approval. And here's a mechanism to fund it essentially and govern it and and whatnot. Um, but it it dawns on me as you're having this conversation. I think one of you folks said it 
you're, hopefully you'll be about to have a new town manager soon who whose advice, opinion, and communication with the residents probably should be taken into account. So maybe the thing to do is, you know, put it, not make but, this decision right now. Alternatively, you could make the decision and, you know. But if we want to empower, if we want to empower the businesses, which is what we want to do, empower the businesses to say, listen, this is your district. The only reason that a bid would even need to exist is to get the equity and funding to improve it. So you don't have a small number of businesses that are ponying up, ponying up all the money. And then you have some freeloaders that are just riding the wave of improvement. So I would say creating this is a step close, just this resolution. I mean, now we're not creating anything. We're just coming back with an idea of what it would look like and going to these businesses. And if we can fill that, then they could help fill that role too. And I think it's stronger going, going kind of on what you're saying, John, it's stronger if you have three business leaders talking to all the other businesses and saying, hey, look, the town's created this bid. We're three, three of the directors of the bid. This is the thought. Are you supportive of it? Then say if myself and the new manager, we went and knocked on all the doors yeah. and said, hey, hey, this is what we want to do. We want to tax you so we can do these things. I think it might be more powerful if we did this step. Mm -hmm. I, but I, there's a fundamental question that comes before that. And that is, are these people, these, these lists of people with addresses and businesses, interested in doing that? Mm -hmm. Why go to the expense of setting up an end profit? doing all that if these people are saying we don't want to participate i mean that's a question that has to be answered first mm -hmm. five years ago or four whenever it was yes. like, it seemed like they did mm -hmm. no i don't know i mean it's a giant right. question the world has changed we're sure. certainly very sure but Expensive. if these people are still interested then go to the expense of creating it and establish it probably around a thousand dollars is is my estimate just so you're aware of mm -hmm. what you're talking about well, well probably, yeah, but I mean, like, yeah, done, you know, yeah. you're spending tax money to, to do that, you know, and so. then we're going to spend legal fees to go and figure out how to give the money back if we don't spend it. Then, once you get the money in the coffers, well, we got this money, what are we going to do with it, right? And a tendency is to want to spend it. And I, I understand what you're saying, Jared, and I'm kind of comfortable with it, but. It's still, I think, if the town is going to create this, that means the town is the leadership. Mm -hmm. And I think someone, you or the town manager or someone, would still need to be that driver and would have to go out to the businesses and say, this is what we're thinking of doing. Are you interested in participating? Do you think it's a good yeah. idea? And once you start talking to a half a dozen business people or a dozen business people, you're going to get a sense whether they think it's a worthwhile opportunity. And if they do, then they're going to jump on the bandwagon and they're going to start helping move this thing along. But I think what those conversations would be stronger with those business leaders and us meeting with them. I agree. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So I think that, right. But how do you, you know, know, figure out this to get involved? It wants to be involved. Right. But with this resolution, it would say, hey, look, because right now we're asking them to get involved. In what? And, and, what do you saying, want to involved in and say, saying, but you're not on the board. The town board's the board of directors. We want you to get involved in your input, but you have no say. Well, right. actually, I don't think that the town board ought to be their board of directors. But we are. But we are. No, we don't have to be. No, we we can't be. be is the well, answer. but what I'm saying is this, that when the bid was created. Are now. Kind of are. We are. Right. It's, see, it's, we are now. We are now. We we'd like to change that. But that's what we're trying to change. Yeah. I, I would like to get businesses involved in this as soon as possible right. and get their yeah. information. So what I'm saying, I can't support that so. until I know that there's going to be businesses involved and they're going to participate. And they want well, this. How about, as, how about this? Think they, I don't think you have to do this in order to do it. But it gives that, it, no, I know. But it, you know. it gives it more weight in my mind to say, listen, we approach a few businesses and say, we have a resolution, you know, and say we'd like to bring you in. 
I'm sorry, Jared, but I can't agree. Okay, with that's okay. I, I, don't agree. I, I think we well, have to read it. Our favor. Right. People right. may right. know right. more about what they want than they. I don't suppose. So organize this meeting in the next few weeks or months or mm -hmm. so. Table. But to, to to throw this at uh, uh, mostly to an incoming town manager, everything else he has to do is win a fair night. I mean, this is a huge thing. Mm -hmm. He's got a lot to come up and up to speed with anyway. This is us. I mean, the town board, but I would have had right. created this whole thing up to us to resolve it. I would have a meeting like the one you had lying in reference, get people together. You're going to have some people who say, Yeah, we agree. The small business owners are going to say, It's going to cost me 10 bucks. I don't want to do it. You know, so right. You're going to have a gradation of that. Right. But I also think, you know, we already have a hundred thousand dollars sitting around in this. I want those business leaders involved as soon as possible on what to do with that anyway. So even if we were to dissolve everything tomorrow, I would still want that to be under the auspices of the district management association. So uh, it, it already has the money in there at this point. I think it is time to get the businesses on the board and involved. having involved right. and making decisions. So John, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to get you one last time, okay? Go for it. <laughs> so on page nine of the agenda, under the Uptown Bid District Management, it says in that, so and we know this, look on the agenda, page nine. So my agenda. Is it before exhibit one, the page before exhibit one? The page, the sorry, page nine of the attachment. Page nine of 21. Nine of 21. In the district plan. In the district plan. So it says, you there? I'm here. Where it says Uptown Bid District Management. Yes. The board of directors of the Uptown Bid shall consist of the five elected members of the town council of the town of Canandaigua, comprised of the town supervisor of the town of Canandaigua and the four town council members of the town of Canandaigua. The town supervisor shall, shall, shall serve as the chief executive officer of the Uptown Bid. So right now, I'm the chief executive officer, and we are the board of directors. So going on what you're saying, all this resolution is doing that's on the table that we don't even have on the table right now, we're just discussing it. This resolution is putting it in the hands of the attorney to create something that would bring in businesses as part of that board of directors. There's no action on this resolution tonight other than creating something that it would come back to us and we could vote it up or down. No, sorry. Are you saying so? So a district manager, this isn't optional if you're going to have a business improvement district. And, and I'm sorry, Jared, maybe I didn't, ex I probably didn't explain it clearly um, when we talked about it. But a, a district management association is a requirement for a business improvement district. Um, and its role, its responsibility is to carry out the plan. And that these 10 pages of the district plan, business, the Uptown Business Improvement District Plan. <clears throat> the town board has legislative responsibilities to essentially authorize construction and maintenance contracts for the bid. Um, and then there are, and the district management association can make recommendations to the town board uh, and can also be authorized by the town board to issue permits essentially for festivals and events. Um, and I don't see that being an issue, but, and then when we create the district management association, then what will have to be approved is what that, uh, I'll create it, and then give you some options as to what looks like what authority is delegated and who would go who the type of people who would be in it. Well, well we, we would then we then would appoint people to that management association. You get so they would vote. We we have three, and then they vote. And then there's uh, essentially by assessed value uh, a weighted vote, a weighted kind of. vote. Uh, so I would propose those options to mm -hmm. you. To decide, and then you essentially have some sort of an election uh, of the bid to create a district management association board of directors, different from the uptown business improvement the board of directors, um, and then the 
district would commence, for lack of a better word, starts for operations. Long. So I say the execution yeah. of the district plan. I would rather, I mean, I would rather go back, you know, and reverse this and, and reverse this back out to five years ago. But I think this line is the best way to start in power, in my mind, to start putting this in the hands of the businesses and taking it out of our hands from telling them what to do. Because I don't think it's, a, it, and I 100% agree with you, it's not our role to tell businesses what to do, how to operate, how to advertise, how to do everything else. Okay. Right now, it, this has been created. We're taxing and we're saying, oh, you need streetlights. So we're going to put it, you know, that's what the intent was. And I don't like that. But this, by creating that, that organization, hands it back to the businesses and it just gets us down that line. I know it's we're spending money to file it, but then at least we've created it and we can show them and say, look, this is what you would be joining. This is what you would be joining. You'd be one of these directors of this group. Well, it was really never the intent to have the town board tell these people how to operate their business. Right. Right. That was never the intent, but that's what you just said. Well, I meant the that's advertise. The no, it's not the intent. Not no. Advertising or anything. We would to provide a forum, a platform, where they could get together and they would have a pot of money every year to spend and improvements in that area. That was the intent all along. Mm -hmm. However, is that something that they are still agreeable with? Do they want to do that? To me, that's a fundamental question that should be answered right. before we do anything. I agree. That's my position. So, well, I mean, I, it. I, I doesn't matter to me. I mean, I go whichever way you say right. I want to. And, yes. You know, if, 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 if you, how would you look at would you look at this as who has the greatest success value has that many votes and no, they uh, can't have more, you can't have one person control more than 33 and one third percent of the votes right but, but it's spelled well, out. one person could have its one vote yeah <clears throat> but it's all spelled out in there well and that stuff yeah but i yeah. mean i'm talking about just you want us to go ahead and formulate this whole thing or not but we already did doesn't mean we can't resend it five years and ago. if we do i want five the input from ago. the business community okay. to do that so, and we this is a method for doing that so that's i i it's already we already created it it already has money in it we already have and we and our problem is we don't have the business input that we've been looking for this resolution gets us that business input that we, we don't know so because they we don't even know if they want this yeah. We don't even know if it's we, all, can, all we, we can work on without a, asking the people. Yes, we did ask business. the people. There were public finish. hearing after public hearing after public hearing. No, it's you're saying something that's not correct, John. We had a number of public hearings about this. We had years of study to try and create this. Yeah, it may not be current anymore, but we are it's been created because of a lot of study and a lot of public hearing and a lot of public input. I would like more public input in how to approach it from this point on because you are correct. There have been a number of changes since June 2021 when this final draft was presented. So but that doesn't mean that we eliminate it when it's sitting there with a hundred thousand dollars in it. I think we should give the businesses an opportunity, a chance to have their say being heard and see if they want to continue doing this. They can create a zero tax rate for next year if we want to sit on it and just let it be for a while. But I don't see the I, I don't see the point in completely dissolving something that took 10 years of work for someone to be created because the public was asking for it at some at that point. So and this well, board could dissolve. Yeah. If more than it could dissolve. In Absolutely. response to what you're saying, Adeline, then move to the position that Terry said. And I said the same thing. Lay it over. Well, I, See if people are interested. I would like and to get people involved as soon as possible. We have laid this over and delayed on this for six we months. Do that without well, we could. I don't think we can. I think yes, I can. think it's a different situation when you actually give people an actual role so on why, project management. Okay, so instead of talking yeah. about it, we, we, everyone knows everyone. Everyone. We know where we are. Let's vote on it. Let's, yeah. let's yeah. vote on it. it yes or no. Right. Let's let's say yes. But or again, no. but one last thing. Sorry, Dave. Just because we create and we formulate the structure doesn't mean we're spending money to file it. It just means we've, this is this proposed structure of what we would have. 
to share with the businesses without filing it and spending the money, correct? We no, that resolution um, is a is a is a approximately one thousand dollar bill to the town, not ultimately to the bid. Yes, yeah, actually to the bid. It says in the be a further result to tell to provide the county attorney yeah. to take such steps. So may be required to create. The association the yeah. Yeah. Let me give you a couple more analogies. Okay, but why? We all know where we are. We know where we're going to vote. I would like to go home. So let's just close oh, the conversation. Unfortunate that you having to go home is more important than what we're going to decide on. Yeah, it's going to what you're let saying. Let me finish on. speaking. Yeah, hold on, guys. Not talk guys. over one another. We said we were going to do that. Let's, I patiently sat here and listened to you speak Not really. the whole right. time that you talked. Why don't we just okay. vote on it? Exactly. Yes, no. Because let me tell one more analogy, okay? We thought we knew what the residents on County Road 28 wanted, right? Mm -hmm. We thought no, we, we knew what the no, residents on no, I didn't. disagree with that. Cheshire wanted. Well, no. you're sitting here, you then, if you we vote positive, door you're door saying them. literally that you know what the community, business community in that area wants. And I just want I, that in John, that's, right? And I want to make no, sure that the I, business You're putting community. words in my mouth. Clearly, what, I, what I clearly want to do is form a committee to see what they want to do. Exactly. I don't care what I want. It doesn't matter this committee. Thing. We, we, we as a government body have to create a committee. So how do we call a vote on this? Let's just call yes, a vote Yes, we on can it. call a vote. I can call a vote. That is Robert's Rules of Order. I second that motion. I would like to call a vote. Move the label? Fine, we usually have to okay. over, but we're we're calling a vote first. All right, so it's laid over. It'll come it's back at, at the next board meeting, which will be on the twenty fourth, where we'll have a vote on it. And I think, importantly, the community needs to know about it. That's why and we it's need been to advertised. have the business owners come in this room and voice their opinion. On it. And it's use the new GoGov website to get the notice out to people so that they understand. What we're talking about here. Well, there, a notice just went out about this meeting. Tonight. Right. Well, can we, I make a suggestion? They have to sign up for it. There is no vote tonight. A board member has exercised his authority, authority to lay it over. Speaker to lay it over. A vote must be held on the 24th. 22nd. 22nd. Well, Why do I keep calling the 24th? I don't know. Oh, you got into it. John Casey. Motion. No, John, he did not make a motion. John he, requested it to be laid over, which is not a motion. Exercise his this authority one, yeah. under the rules of procedure to lay the proposed resolution over until the next board scheduled board meeting, I believe. Uh, might I suggest listening? Every single one of you agrees that you want input from the businesses. Exactly. In red and yellow mm -hmm. up there. Um, maybe spend five minutes right now figuring out how you're going to get that input at your next meeting. That's a suggestion. If you call some people you know, maybe you send a letter. I don't know. Oh, well, you have a list of who they are. We've got a list of who we are. If you can contact them and gauge your interest, send them a copy of the resolution. We literally establishing this association. Are you interested? Ask them to come to the meeting on the 22nd and, uh, you know, register their interest in it. The way we got that amount of people at the other meeting is we literally, including myself, went door to door and handed well, it in person to the business owner. That's mm -hmm. literally yes. how we got them to come last time. I guess you'd find out how interested they are. Could, could we create a document similar to that to do that? Twenty second or the twenty second? Oh my gosh! Twenty second. I think we it's can. Um, <laughs> could we create that document that so we could just go out and hand out? Um, it would just be. It would just be a, a simple handout with a piece of paper, and it would be me going door to door to all of the. Or as many as you could. As many as right. as many as we could in that area to get them in there. So all right. Say like a like a flyer. Just a flyer. Saying the town board wants your input about and into, we could hire a town crier oh, and, into a bid. So can we put this on the agenda first? So if we get people to come in, they don't have to yes. do all the other malarkey. This would that, be this would be resolution 184. So this would be the first resolution. First thing. First continued thing. resolution at the right. next meeting. All right. Well, that is the 
conclusion of the business that we have for tonight. So I, can I get a motion to exit? Exit. Can I get a motion to exit to uh, to adjourn the meeting of the bid? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Meetings adjourned. Uh, so Preston, Adeline, and Terry. Terry. Yes. Yep. Uh, excerpt <clears throat> from the town board meeting minutes. Please excerpt from the town board meetings meeting minutes from the motion to enter the did meeting to the motion to exit the bid meeting and make that a separate set of meeting minutes. Separate set of minutes, separate page. The uptown business improvement district. Yep. Okay. So for the time we manage that until right now. And, uh, it's still I can talk. You can call me tomorrow. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, one final privilege of the floor. Anyone like to be heard at this time? We do not have any other business, nor do we have an executive session. So I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Adeline and Dave, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Meetings adjourned. All right. Thanks, everybody.